Well, I tell you what, folks, it's not an awful lot of fun being a travel writer in a pandemic. There's not much that folk like me can do. At this time of year, at the time of filming, it's January 2021. Scotland is very much in the midst of another lockdown. So very much stay at home. That's frustrating, but all we can do is look forward to what is on the other side and the travel opportunities that may be out there. So with that in mind, my heart always goes to the Outer Hebrides, the beautiful chain of islands in Scotland's far northwest. Stunning beaches, among other things. So let me take you on a little bit of a tour. Hopefully, at the other side of all this, it's a useful travel guide. And in the more immediate term, I hope that it brightens the days just a little bit. Stay safe out there. Now the Outer Hebrides of Scotland have over 100 islands, so I'm never going to be able to cover them all in depth, but I will try and focus on the main ones. Working my way from south to north then, I'm starting here in Vattersea. And I think it's a terrific place to start because Vattersea Bay is one of the nicest beaches in all of Scotland. There's a, a really interesting tombolo-like effect to the landscape, so there's sands on either side. And from here, we can then start to work our way gradually north across the causeway to the Isle of Barra. Barra is known as the Outer Hebrides in miniature because it's got a bit of everything going on. The west and the north are very much the same kind of sandy, beautiful feel. The east and the south are a bit more rugged. And the south is dominated by the village of Castle Bay, which is the main settlement. And the village itself is dominated by Kissimmee Castle, which is an 11th century ruin, but the building that we see today goes back to the 15th. It's a McNeil fortress, and you can still picture the Viking longboats coming screaming into that bay, which I think gives a terrific atmosphere. From Barra then, we head north to the Isle of Eriskay. There's a short ferry crossing which brings you to this beautiful little island. This is where Bonnie Prince Charlie landed for the first time in Scotland ahead of his great conflicts with the Jacobites. And Eriskay is also famous for the ponies which roam freely around the island and can be spotted from the roadside if you're passing through. From Eriskay then, we continue the road north across the causeways. Now causeways pretty much connect all of the main islands in the Outer Hebrides. And the one between Eriskay and South Uist, where we're heading next, I think is particularly special. South Uist is similar to, to Eriskay in its terms of its landscape. It's quite mountainous, it's quite rocky. I think the East Coast hill walking is some of the best that you'll find in these islands. Being more is the highest point and is an absolute cracker. You can get a great view across the panorama of all the islands, not to mention the local seafood, which is pretty special as you can see. It's now suddenly all about the beaches as we keep on heading north. This starts at Benbecula, which is a bit more of a hub. There's more of a buzz about the place and more of activity. There's an airport there and there's a beautiful stretch of west coast beaches. You can even go pony trekking on some of the sands there. It is that level of idyllic. Then there's another causeway involved as you head to North Uist. So unlike South Uist, which is more about the hill walking and the, the raw ruggedness, North Uist is all about its beaches, particularly on the north and west coasts, where the sunsets can be utterly spectacular. The Udal Peninsula is a favourite spot of mine on the north coast, but you could find these beaches entirely to yourself, and not an awful lot of tourists come to North Uist, so you can find total solitude and, and a connection with nature that you maybe won't find anywhere else. The eastern and central parts of North Uist could be seen as being a little bit more bleak, but even that has its advantages because it's a brilliant place for bird watching. Great for fishing too, particularly trout fishing. My grandparents were big, big fans of North Uist, so I've been coming here all my life, and my grandpa in particular loved to go fishing here. Now when it comes to history, there's not a huge amount of historic attractions as such on the Outer Hebrides, largely because not many people have ever lived here, but also because over time and because of the conditions and the, the exposure to the elements, things have been lost to time. But there are a few historic sites that do stand out. This bizarre 19th century folly on Loch Skalpig, and also Pobble Finn Stone Circle, another standing stone, one of several standing stones that you can find in the Outer Hebrides. Further north still, there's Bernary, which continues that beautiful theme of stunning, stretching beaches that go all the way along the west coastline. For me, and I think for many people, the Isle of Harris is something of a favourite. Absolutely mind-blowing, jaw-dropping landscapes. And I think what is most special about it is the fact that it can be split into two islands, really. North Harris, which you can see in the distance here, is much more mountainous. South Harris, though, is all about the beaches. That turquoise water that draws comparisons and has always drawn comparisons with much more tropical climes 
like the Caribbean, the clarity of the water is unreal, turquoise and beautiful. It's not warm, let's not kid ourselves, that's, that's going to hurt if you get in that water, it will sting, but the rawness of it is, is unmatched anywhere that I've found. This is a clip from the north of Harris though, and as I say it's much more mountainous, much more rugged. These are the places where you will find largely to yourself, the only company you might find is perhaps a golden or a sea eagle. Other than that you can walk these points entirely alone, or with a, a canine friend if you're very lucky. The Clisham is the highest point of North Harris, these are the, the highest peaks in the Outer Hebrides, but I think heading to the coast is almost even more special. This is a favourite spot of mine. That's out on the west coast, looking towards the outlying island of Scarp. You can see the interesting nature of the terrain. Rugged and mountainous, lunar, otherworldly. But on a summer day, you get the macker, the, the flower-strewn landscape like that, that carpets the ground. Utterly beautiful and serene and unforgettable, I think, is probably the, the key takeaway from it for me. And I, I try to come to Harris every year. Uh, 2020 was the first time in recent memory that I didn't make it and looking back in the year there was definitely something missing because Harris is always one of the highlights of the year. It's not an easy place to get to of course, it's, it's, a, it's a long long trek even from, from central Scotland but if you spend a week or perhaps even two up here you won't forget it, it will stick with you forever. This is the north again, the whaling station and you can see the interesting nature of the terrain contrasting with something much more obviously spectacular in the south. The, the best beaches, Hushness, Las Cantayar, Scarista, these are household names for fans of Scottish beaches. Everyone has their own favourite and there are countless that you can choose from and many that you will have entirely to yourself that will feel like your own private beach. That's perhaps the most special thing. Harris is also famous for Harris Tweed, which is a big employer on the island and more recently for the Harris Distillery which is producing what is fast becoming one of Scotland's favourite gins and it's soon to be producing whisky as well, as if you needed another reason to visit. And as I bring this tour of the Outer Hebrides to a close, I finish at the Isle of Lewis. Now Lewis and Harris are connected by land, although the implication is that they're separate islands that are actually very much connected. I think that when it comes to history, Lewis streaks ahead because it's got this site, the Callanish Standing Stones, which for my money is the best example of a standing stone site anywhere in the world. The mystique and allure of these stones have been inspiring creatives for generations. There's also the intricate Lewis chessmen, some of which you can see in the excellent new museum of the Isles within Lewis Castle, and the restored black houses with their thatched roofs. A lasting tribute, I think, to the, the closeness that the islanders have always had with the land around them. And there's an awful lot of land to love on Lewis. It's the biggest of the islands that we've looked at. As I say, it is connected to Harris, which makes it even bigger if you look at it as one island. But off the coast as well, you'll find some absolute beauties. There's a diversity, once again, to the landscape. The east coast is a bit like this, very rocky and rugged. This is These islets just spread for miles and miles. There's all sorts of wildlife to be seen, including seals, maybe even dolphins if you're lucky as well. Taking a boat trip here is well worth your while. The west coast, contrastingly, once again, those glorious beaches at Boster. Great on Great Bernera, Uig as well. Beautiful, beautiful sands. There's also the main hub of the Outer Hebrides, the only town of any real size, which is Stornoway, where there is also an airport and a ferry port if you're coming in from the mainland at Olapool. And that brings this tour of the Outer Hebrides to a close. Now, another thing that I think is very important to bear in mind when talking about places like the Outer Hebrides is the subject of over-tourism. This has become a big thing in the industry in recent years. It's gone off the boil a little bit, sure, because of COVID, but it will come back once we're all travelling again. This is what happens when too many people go to the same place at the same time, resulting in congestion, usually a bad experience for the visitors that are there, but perhaps more seriously, long-term, if not permanent damage to the natural environment. And this is particularly relevant in rural areas like the Outer Hebrides, which don't necessarily have the infrastructure to handle vast swathes of tourists coming to visit at the same time. How can we get around this then? Well, first of all, consider the time of year that you're coming. July and August tend to be the busiest time, so if you can avoid those months, then all the better. Also consider being prepared. Have everything booked in advance. Don't just show up and think that your hotel is going to have vacancies, because it may very well not. 
The rules of the road is another big one as well because most of the Outer Hebrides is run on a single track so you have to get used to the rules using passing places and letting other vehicles come and go. That can be tricky especially if you have to reverse for large distances so get confident behind the vehicle or the wheel of whatever vehicle that you've got even if it is a bigger vehicle like a motorhome. Now I don't want to, to labour this point too much because tourism is vital for the local economies up there. It doesn't mean that tourists aren't welcome, they most definitely will be, but there just needs to be a balancing act between having people come and see the place and too many people ruining the experience for others and potentially scarring those beautiful landscapes. Some things to keep in mind. I've got just a couple of final things to say about the Outer Hebrides then. The first thing is Gaelic. So bearing in mind that this is the local language, it's still widely spoken. You will see it on road signs, which is great. Long may that continue. And if you want to really endear yourself to the locals, try and pick up a word or two. The other thing is the Sabbath. Things tend to run a little bit slower on a Sunday for religious reasons. Keep that in mind with your planning. Other than that, guys, that brings this video to a close. I hope it's been a useful guide. I can't wait to get out there traveling again and to bring more of Scotland to you. But in the meantime, take care.